Yeah, uh, just uh, it's always fun to watch this early season. Now we've got the uh, Dave Gavitt games coming, which Indiana, of course, uh, playing a St. John's team Wednesday, which probably going to be entertaining, at least for uh, from from a standpoint of uh, it looks like Indiana has gotten their their game stuff together. Uh, St. John's, we know, has put a lot of points on the board. Of course, they'll be on the road, but this should be uh, an entertaining game. It'll be Indiana's best challenge, obviously, so far. Uh, but that was a nice jump between game one and game two for them on not just hitting shots, but more importantly, playing a complete game, in essence, to the end. And even when the guys that came in, like Lander, uh, Leal at the end, they're all scoring. They're scoring. They scored seven points apiece. They were out there hustling. Uh, uh, Landry got a steal. So you didn't bring in some scrubs off the bench. That's that's a third wave, and that could be a very positive thing for Indiana. Yeah, I, I think they've got a lot there. It, it, uh, the production from Miller Cop to this point, a little bit disappointing. I think they'd hoped for more than what they've gotten. Uh, Parker Stewart, same thing. That, that They were supposed to be the answers to the absence of three-point shooting. And to this point, uh, neither has uh, played or shot the ball particularly effectively. And that's, you know, that's that's a problem. That's a concern uh, that they, they still don't have that aspect of the game covered the way they'd hoped. Uh, and it's going to – St. John's is an interesting challenge because they, 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 they have, you know, they, they have – played differently at different times uh, over Mike Anderson's tenure, but they have the ability because he's, you know, I know he instructs those players on how to do it on stepping up the pressure, uh, trying to force tempo. And so does, does he do that on the road against Indiana? I think that'll be interesting to see, but uh, this is a team with a lot of ability that J- Julian Champigny is a terrific player, basically a 20 point a game guy. Uh, Posh Alexander is a very capable point guard, overlooked in his recruiting class, but an excellent passer, a a disruptive defender, uh, the kind of guy who understands how to to read the defense, read the offense and and steal the basketball. He averages two steals a game now, and that's not uncommon for him. That's pretty much what he's done for his career. So they they brought in a player that Big Ten fans will remember, Montez Mathis, who played for – for – Rutgers for several for several years, as well as Aaron Wheeler, who spent three years at Purdue. Uh, two, you know, Wheeler, a very dynamic player uh, who fits into that pressure system, uh, maybe a little better than he fit into what uh, what Purdue did uh, in terms of their half court defense. Uh, and then Montez is a guy who can get the ball to the rim. Uh, he can beat you off the bounce and get it to the rim. So there's a lot of ability there at St. John's. It's going to be a real challenge. Uh, for the Hoosiers. I, I, I think it's a terrific game uh, that will allow them to to get a feel for the kinds of variety they might face in March, maybe less so in the league. Uh, one thing, one problem the teams have in the Big Ten is that although there's a variety of, of approaches, it's still, there's still a, you know, there's still a, a reliability. You're going to face teams that play man-to-man defense almost, almost without exception. Now they all tweak those but you're going to play man to man. You're not going to play teams many that press. Uh, you're not going to play teams many that play zone. Uh, so playing a team like St. John's that has the ability to press, uh, and and in some cases the uh, the willingness and eagerness to do it, I, I think that's a great exercise for the Hoosiers uh, if they if they're able to put together the season that we think they're capable of. But again, yeah. I'm just curious about that of how you know you talk about St. John's tempo how. Should Indiana approach it? I'm going to ask Mike Woodson this too. Do you run with them, or do you try to dictate tempo, or, or what do you think would serve Indiana best in that in that course? I don't think there's any question that sir, what would what is likely to serve them best is to play uh, at a m- more measured pace uh, because that puts Trace in one on ones uh, with big guys. He doesn't have to, you know, he doesn't have to sprint the floor to get a touch. I mean, you you, you want to sprint back on defense, but. Unless you're getting an open layup, you don't want to have to sprint. You don't want your big guy to have to sprint the floor uh, just to get his hands on the ball uh, on, a, on a reasonable number of occasions. That's what was happening last night. Uh, Curbelo going down when when they, when they were able to beat the press, they played too fast. When they weren't, they had less too too little shot clock time and rushed. Uh, so I, I think that 
It, it, one thing I heard uh, said on the, um, it was Jay Billis that said it, on the telecast of the Villanova UCLA game. UCLA at this stage with Mick Cronin wants to play faster. I, I spoke with Mick two, three weeks ago, and he they, they, have, they have eight or nine players they really like, and they feel like the way to get that, uh, the, make the best use of that is to play much faster. And Jay said on uh, Friday night uh, slash Saturday morning, he said it's easier for a team to slow it down that wants to slow it down than it is for a team that wants to uh, speed it up to speed it up. And so I think it makes sense. Uh, They have, they have enough numbers at Indiana to run. They even have two point guards so they can run, but they only got one trace. And I think you want to make the best possible use of him. Uh, I don't think that in that St. John's has a lot going for it, but I don't think they have anybody who is uh, built, designed to take the, you know to take Trace apart to 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 cause him huge problems in the in post defense the way like Miles Johnson did a couple of times last year. And don't forget, you've got a former Purdue player on St. John's and uh, Aaron Wheeler. So didn't realize that. Uh, I don't recall him even leaving there, I guess, for, with good reason. But, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, that's the portal, man. And, you know, for Aaron uh, at, at Purdue, um, with with Edie coming in, uh, the, the minutes for a four uh, were going to be limited. It, it not, not necessarily uh, – uh, but they were going to try to steal some minutes uh, where they play them both together, where they play him and, and Travion together. Uh, so that right. probably would take a chunk out of Aaron's time. I, I think yeah. this is a better Trey fit Kaufman. For him. Yeah, Trey coming in is another one, uh, uh, as well as the other freshman whose name just zipped out of my head uh, that played with the U19s. Yeah, um, I know what you're talking about. I can't think gosh. of him either. Uh, but anyway, Not important enough. It, no, no, he's a very good player. Caleb I'm first, uh, he's a terrific player. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So that's so with all that coming in, um, Aaron's minutes were were going to he was going to struggle to get on the floor. And as I said before, I, I think that he fits better into what Purdue does. Excuse me, what it, St. John's does than he did into what Purdue does. His his dynamism is tailor made for a team that wants to play faster, that wants to uh, that wants to get out and press and run. And uh, and so I think that Aaron is going to long, you know, is going to fit better uh, with with St. John's than he did at Purdue. Uh, they're just. There just wasn't enough uh, time for him left at, uh, with the boiler. So I think first is terrific. Uh, Edie is and Travion are doing great. Uh, so the, the amount of minutes in the front court for him just wasn't going to be there. Looks you know, like you're lost Waddell through a, a torn ACL. I just wanted to note that. Yeah. It's always sad. Yeah, that's a rough. That's a rough ride. You know. I, I, uh, I'm actually doing a story. I'm working on a story now about a, a doctor in West Virginia who has a technique that uh, seems to indicate he, that you can come back faster uh, from the ACL than traditionally. Uh, that, that'll appear this week. Uh, wow. Uh, and, and so, it, it, you know, but right, you know, when you see uh, uh, the, the Waddell young man, uh, the first thing you think of is like he's not playing for a year. And and that's you know, and, and that's a that's a long time for a young athlete. And uh, there have been in with this uh, with this doctor that I'm working with uh, that I'm working on the story about uh, from West Virginia. He's had athletes uh, come back in uh, to to full practice uh, in a, as little as four months. So um, uh, very interesting uh, possibilities there. It's an early stage of what he's up to. Uh, but and it's got a ways to go, but uh, maybe some promise that uh, that it doesn't mean a full year from uh, if if this technique turns out to be a winner.